All right, um, so let's start off with some quick announcements. Um, Porsche Studio is no longer on sale for those who were wondering where to get it and whether it was still on sale. I know that there are some comments uh, pinned on my videos somewhere announcing the sale. I have to go through each video and unpin those announcement comments. Um, they go up every time there's a sale season and a lot of videos get them. Um, so I've been having my team and I go in and, and uh, unpin some of those comments. So no, it is no longer on sale. It is still a sale price that is um, cheaper than it was before. Uh, so the usual is 89 that might go back up for the summer. Um, but for now it's on a sale price, but not the sale price. Um, as well as my brushes, uh, I keep them on sale just because there's financial constraints everywhere. It's not really just for me to ask 90 bucks for a software. Um, and then uh, announcements for the community. So if you want your work posted on the Critique Hour um, and you're not sure how to get your work in my videos, uh, you go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon here in the top left, the top right. Um, and please join us on Reddit. Uh, the second comment pinned at the top here is our community design challenge. The due date has been officially decided as Tuesday the 16th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, which is next week. Um, so if you have not started yet, it uh, might be a little bit too late to start, um, but uh, please read through it. Watch the previous critique hour here for the last time we did the ancient weapon design challenge. There are rewards as well, so read through it. Um, and then... Uh, if you want to help us out and join as a patron, you don't have to join as a $20 patron, even though the apprentices for the $20 patrons get assignments, they get access to the exclusive Discord, um, and if you want a relaxed way to stay on top of your illustrating, um, you can do that through uh, my Discord uh, through Patreon. But there are lower tiers all the way down to a dollar a month, um, and I keep it that low just because it's a universal uh, a pledge amount. For all those who want to give back to the community and if everybody joined, um, it would really support the community's longevity. Uh, so thank you to everyone who has answered the call and joined as a patron. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Um, and uh, that's it for announcements. So today I'm going to be continuing the discussion on the basic skill uh, uh, campaign I've been doing since the start of the year. It's, it's moving outside of basic skills now. It's moving into more advanced skills, which is illustrating and compiling and using references. Um, so the last one that I did, that critique hour on uh, illustration and lead style splash, we covered um, incorporating a character into the environment uh, a little bit more just for the illustration and how to make it read more as a, um, as, as a larger scale uh, environment um, uh, and how to incorporate a reference. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with this one. Uh, and I'm going to try to hurry up uh, with that one because I am a bit sick still and I'm extremely short of breath. I know it's not coronavirus. Um, okay, so let's jump into Portrait Studio, which I've already opened up. So let's talk about this piece. Um, it's great. Uh, biggest problems I have with it is how much you expose the face uh, to this in unknown light source that's making everything visible. Um, this universal light source on the camera, which is a very tacky light source. Uh, anytime you have light on a camera in a movie or, or something, it's very tacky. It feels tacky. Overhead light, uh, light from the side on a nearby table, from a candle, those are organic lights. Those are, feel more natural um, because it's like sunlight or a uh, fire or something that we're used to, um, even, you know, into the what we're used to seeing over time through generations, those are the lights that we're used to. Anytime we have artificial light that has too much exposure, that's too pale, those are the lights we detest and we don't want to see. Those are the lights that you see used in horror movies, uh, camera light um, and uh, fluorescent light. Those are very, very popular because they're unsettling um, and we don't want to use them. So you've kind of used that here, but it's not the same. This is not a horror scene. This is a this is this is an exhibition of the character's power. It's supposed to be moody. It's supposed to be magical. It's supposed to be atmospheric. Um, so when we're looking at this character and we see all of this um, artificial light that's canceling out nearly all her shadows, but is overhead as well, which makes no sense, uh, it's making the character just feel very flat and boring. So I'm going to do a number of things. I'm going to boost the light behind her. 
because it is a it is the kind of Gandalf reveals himself moment. Even if Gandalf's a good guy and she's some kind of enchantress or maybe evil, he's using that traditional green for evil characters. But it is a, a, an introduction scene or some kind of what's the perfect word for it when a when a character just like it's like a debut of the character. Um, so it's like that initial intro scene in a show or an anime or a movie when the character just bursts out of the darkness and, and kind of reveals themselves. So I'm going to enhance her silhouette and then I'm going to extend the canvas down. The character reveal, yeah, but with the word I'm looking for, kind of like a synonymous with debut, um, like a bursting debut or something. Uh, and then I'm going to extend the canvas vertically downward to try to complete the scene a little bit so we have more of a, a less of a tile canvas. Exposition, entrance, yeah, entrance, there we go, that's a good word. Um, yeah, I think entrance is a good word, uh, but it needs a, an adjective there. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's not to uh, Wheel of Fortune here. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to use Portrait Studio to pose the model um, and try to uh, bring out the same pose and then, uh, and then talk about what we could be doing with the indirect universal light um, or the diffused universal light because there is light around her in the world. But it's a it's a midnight. Uh, it's dark, um, so there shouldn't be much overhead sunshine light like we see here on a beach. Like these are beach shadows, you know, with the light uh, sunshine. At least northern beaches, um, and uh, they're not completely above our heads. So uh, the sun, I mean. So let's get on with it. Um, first thing I'm gonna do, actually, I kind of was just preparing this before, uh, but let me just. Uh, make the background brighter a little bit. And I use these just because they're so easy to use. And I want her head tilted down. So remember it's W-E-R, W-E-R, and I'm using E uh, to shift the angle of the joint down. And so I want her head to be tilted down a little bit because she seems focused. Um, so when we focus, our eyes are at the front. When we talk, our mouth sticks out. So if the character is not talking but looking, you want the head tilted down and the eyes at the forefront of the pose. If the character is talking, then we stick out, and this is normal human behavior actually, um, we stick out our, uh, our jaw when we talk, if you've noticed. Uh, it's very weird to talk, you know, with your jaw pushed in, and if a character does that, they're shy or kind of, you know, moving away from you. But when we talk and we're lecturing and we're talking, we stick our jaw out. And communicating so if it was a character who was kind of like boasting about their strength and their power the chest comes out the jaw comes out but she's mostly showing off her power which she's doing with, with her arms but her eyes should be at the forefront of her gesture looking forward and so I'm doing that this way and I'm just trying to figure out what you did with her pose um, And it might be that I need to make them move out a little bit. I'm not so worried about what you've done with the hands because I, uh, sorry, what you've done with the, um, with the, what's it called? Sorry, I'm a little bit losing track of what I'm doing. One moment. With the arms, because I don't have a problem with them. They actually, I think you did them very nicely. Uh, what I do want to show you is the light that you've done. So I'm going to push the joint back. Sometimes you got to push the joint back a little bit for it to make sense. So remember, tr you use all of the joints at your disposal. Explore all of them. Make sure that you are using the, them to the max. Okay, and she's kind of just tilted her wrist up into the flame and moving that. I'm not going to bother with this hand. I just want to get on with the rest. So to resize the body, make the hips bigger, just like last time, I'm going to press R. Oops. And you could resize the whole body. You can increase the size of the stomach, um, leaving like the body intact, like the, the lower half. Or you can increase the whole thing. Oops, press that button. Increase the whole thing. Shrink the, the stomach area. 
make it more feminine, less athletic, but resize the head back up. So you get that kind of extreme proportions. And I'm just gonna do a really simple gesture with the thighs, nothing like, just like last time, something very simple. But it, it does do a lot for the bot, for the portrait, for us to, uh, to show some, for the illustration to show some more. Just something that's happening there. And I feel like she's kind of doing like a, a slight walk forward. You want to make it a little bit more um, grandiose. You can also make her tuck her whole chest forward and uh, tilt the ankles down. And then I'm just going to move that in to make her look, feel a little bit more feminine and delicate, just moving the legs in closer to make it look less like an athletic pose. That's too much. All right. Another cool thing you could do is just tilt the body. Um, so, the, you know, the legs could be facing that way, but the body could be facing forward a little bit. So there's kind of like a hip displacement. And if you feel like the shoulders are too narrow, you don't have to make everything touch. Um, the shoulders could just leave their, their rotation. <clears throat> just to make them wide again. If you want them there. Uh, I know a lot of you are thinking about where the hell is Control Z for Porsche Studio. Um, it's going to be a while for us to, to release that. It's been a very extremely very busy two years. Um, I know a lot of you are, are waiting for it and it's it's a very desired sought after um, a, a, a tool for Porsche Studio because of how much changes we do make when we're posing in a figure. But for now, it's 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 doing it's very it is it is in the it is made it is done it is ready for release it's just got it's very buggy um to be honest and so we we want to get it done but it's just a two man team um and it is a lot of work uh to program Control Z in there um so but we update is coming just like Abu says here um and it is already ready for release we just don't like to release things where we may have another mishap for the update that we had last time where all your Porsche studios weren't working because of a drop in the network um we want to know that when we send out updates it's for a very large batch of changes and control z is one of many changes coming up including more variety and objects but um let's get on with it because it wasn't just about the pose today um it was about uh i need to tilt her head back down it was about the lighting. So I'm going to control, by pressing one, you can control the universal light. And I'm going to darken the background color. And we have two universal lights here. Um, and what you failed to do is just, uh, let me go back to the lighting, is just, you know, use this to your, to your take, the, like, take advantage of what you have here. So let me just, um, reposition some of these and by the way if it doesn't look great on this from the side it doesn't matter as long as the I feel like it doesn't really matter as long as the pose feels good from the angle you've chosen it so I'm going to uh, which one am I on right now I'm on the first one okay so I'm gonna boost that strength up and I'm going to turn on volumetric which should help me create a better silhouette all right um and you could really mess with this stuff like i am going to boost the density just because i want a stronger silhouette behind her and i'm going to keep checking so the head tilt the shoulders are nice and separate from the body a little bit um you can pose each finger by the way and now it's time for the Others, the little, so I'm going to choose only two of these flames to make important. I'm going to get rid of this one because this one, why put these there if you're going to just bring one front and center? It's no more important than the others and it looks exactly the same. 
you haven't designated it as a unique part of the spell, um, so don't let it interrupt your entire light. And it's not enough for a light camera, by the way. This is considered a fireplace or a candle. It's very small. It's not big and booming like a camera light. So that means her cast shadows, is, which, act, which, which would actually be pointing up, uh, meaning that it would be like put a flashlight under your face and your shadows all point up and you have light everywhere. So you could do that at the end. But let's just see what we're, what we're doing right now. So I'm going to try to create this guy and this guy. So one is tucked into her neck. One is slightly away from her face. Um, so spotlight two. Indicator is on. Um, not sure why those guys are all the way over there. I may be bugging. I think they're just, I've just, I barely use them, so I'm hardly used to them. Um, so point light one is in the back, and that's the one with the point light two. Oh, spotlight. All right, so I'm just going to turn off the spotlights. I'm just going to use this one instead. All right, so we've got point light, oh, son of a bitch, point light two tucked into her neck. So I'm just going to tilt this slightly, move it in closer to her neck, and then decrease the strength. All right, so we're going to put that in place. I may need to... Just make it a little less strong and just decrease the range just because it's just a little flame and yes you can turn off all the indicators and all of that um, let's turn off her joints as well and turn off the indicator for the one in the back and then, um, so you get two point lights, two spotlights. I guess I'm going to have to force a spotlight to act like a, and it's okay. But I'm going to have it act like a, a nearby little range is higher, strength is lower, angle. Slightly bigger, so I guess you could take a lot of this. And then I'm going to just change the position slightly. So let's see what we've got here. Remember, these are just supporting lights. They don't have to be um, super present because the silhouette and kind of what they do for the rim as rim light. So that in order to achieve rim light, you have to put the light beside the object and then tilt the camera. That's what rim light is all about. Turn off indicator. I think that's a pretty good angle here. And the universal light is on. It's just very, very, very dim. So that's what's allowing us to see the rest of her body. And that's pretty much how you do it. Uh, that you're just dimming the universal light if it's a nighttime scene. All right, so I'm kind of tempted to close the other eye. I think I should just stop being lazy. You could turn the joints back on, but just lazy. Oh yeah, and that's something else we could do, um, is make the arms a little more asymmetrical. You kind of made them exactly the same. I think that looks a little more organic. And then finally, you could do a little bit more with the legs as well. So you could make them kind of more athletic um, or more floaty, just like that. Just something a little bit more um, elegant. Sorry, I'm just thinking about what else I could be doing. Uh, do I turn them on? 
maybe a forward tilt in there. All right, so I'm going to mess around with the universal just to figure out whether or not I'm using it to the, you know, the most. So it's still going to be, and let me change the background color to like black. Direction of, oh no, no, that's not what I meant to do. Um, my bad. Uh, background color to black so we have more contrast and let's um let's uh change tabs and just make that universal light like so this is if light was directly above her i want to keep the silhouette and the spotlights so that's going to be there and you could boost the silhouette in your reference this is like enough i think um but point light one which is the one in the back I can make it a little stronger and decrease the directional light strength a little bit more for a stronger silhouette if that's what you need. But I think I'll keep range low and then keep this all like, oops. That way we're just having those beautiful two lights kind of helping us out. And you could keep these little god rays. They, they, they disperse because the texture that hovers behind for the volumetric light um, is, uh, is randomized. So take a shot when you feel like it. Okay, so we're going to apply all this here just like I did last time. I'm going to try not to photo bash, but if I have to for the sake of time, I will. Don't make me. All right, so I'm going to quickly get through all of these changes. Horrible tile canvas. I'm not sure what you were thinking, but <clears throat> let's, uh, I used to have an image viewer that would, that would keep my image floating at the top. And I, I, they're, they're, I don't think it's supported anymore or, you know, it's no longer working. Um, but, uh, I, I really don't know where to find another equivalent. If you guys know of one, do let me know where it might be. Um, so Making that there, pushing this down a little bit, oops, sorry, and then let's get started. So I'm going to just bring in some really basic, quick silhouette changes here. I'm just trying to remember what I did with the legs. I will be bringing them in. That's not enough time for all of that. And then just creating stronger atmosphere behind, and this should go pretty quickly. Um, a lot of this stuff can be uh, fixed later on, so I'm not too concerned. <coughs> so. Um, quick changes are going to be a massive darken using the, this, this bluish light you've got going on, this purplish thingy. So drop that there, lower the opacity a great deal. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to just start erasing at the background for the silhouette, which instantly feels and looks better just from these changes. But seriously, don't stop there. That's horrible to just stop there and not explore more of what you can get out of this. So that's with more darken. I want it to be just a little, a little boost. And then I'm going to um, continue with the arm. Because they're secondary point lights, like they're, uh, they're not these big volumetric um, universal lights or drowning lights of some kind. These can be factored in later because they're local. They don't affect that many objects that we need to factor them in now. What I'm doing right now with my burn, with, with my darken layer is thinking about the universal light environment. Okay, and then I'm gonna duplicate the layer. I'm gonna delete that character. So turn that off, delete her completely, and now I'm just going to think about what's happening with the environment behind to get that silhouette down and under control. 
Well, it doesn't matter over there. So I'm going to, oopsie, wrong way, um, this one. I'm going to brighten. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, levels. That's better. And that's just strengthening the silhouette behind her. And you've got way too many framing trees. I think they're way too framed. We'll, we'll dodge these little lights later on. Okay, so merge that down. And I think our popular value is this one. So that's the one I'm just going to start applying everywhere till we get like a nice comfortable silhouette. Yeah, these trees feel very constricting. And that's, that's, this, this is proof that your, um, your tile canvas is just as hell. It's just garbage. It's, it's never going to help you. What is it? What can a tile canvas achieve? It, I mean, the only reason you ever need to work in a square canvas is like, if you have to paint like, or design a laptop holder, or laptop case or something, or a sleeve for your, for your tablet where it's like a weird shape and you have to work with the shape you have for some kind of graphics um, uh, design thing with your text and your little swirls or whatever. Um, there's really no need to ever work with one or force yourself to work with one. All right, and then I'm gonna jump into filter, liquify and start adjusting the portrait. So one big collective motion downward to kind of tilt her head down and boost forward that 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 gaze where the head is tilted down and up in a luckily the hairline is so high as in a, as it is so remember we see less chin more forehead when a character is tilted down and we see more of that downward slant and then I'm going to select am I still on no I'm going to select the face and slightly push it lower. And that should also help. Okay, so she feels a little bit more intense. Um, and it's not just more forehead, it's more top of the head as well. So I'm going to try to boost that. Oy, lots of changes. And then I'm going to see if I could relieve the arm, so I have to start working with my reference nearby now. Um, so I'm just gonna bring in some relief for the arm between the body and the arm. You always wanna apply this little breathing room. It's just bad dancing when the shoulders and I mean, when the elbows are just attached to the body. It's just bad posing. Uh, so I'm gonna do it like that. And this one's kind of slightly more asymmetrical now. Oops. It's okay about the trees, those can be fixed later. And then that arm, let's see what we get when we fix this one before we move on to the next one. And then I'm gonna grab that silhouette color and try to bring forth that breathing room between the arms. So I have no problem with the way you pose them other than this one, I guess. And then, oof, those signatures. <laughs> it's kind of cute. I feel bad for deleting the little student signature. Whenever I do, I feel like I hear the, no, like a little student whimper. Not my identity. <laughs> uh, there will come a day when y'all stop signing your work. You'll just be so humbled by all the good out there, like all the really good artists. And I'm not saying you guys are bad. You'll just be so humbled that you'll know that you're going to eventually move out of that part of your, you know, of and just try to be part of the collective good in, in, the, in the world of art. You don't really feel like you need to put a stamp on anything because the, the internet is huge now and 
people don't get away with plagiarism the way they used to. Oh, people get on them fast. Now I'm just using dodge tool to boost that silhouette once again. There's values all over the place, all over the place. So it's very hard to uh, dodge and expect the same result in two sections of a painting. All right, we'll get there. And then um, I'm going to try to really lost track of these trees. I kind of don't even want to deal with them anymore. Maybe I could bring some back later. And then I'm going to try to dodge around the hair just because it would disperse a little bit allowing more light in oopsie and I'm just gonna let some of those trees hang out in the background a little bit with some distant values if you wanted a purely dark scene and there's no character um, silhouette or anything like that uh, you you could try uh, you could try something like that I'm just gonna boost the contrast just a little bit and then dim the whole thing and then go back to before I did that and just delete at the background so we have two universes two light environments the shadow and the silhouette it's one light environment but two environments of values I think that's, for the most part, enough preparation for the silhouette. We can now move on for the rest of the body. So, just like last time, just to rush so we have a better before and after, I'm going to photo bash the lower half. Oops. Son of a bitch. And then lower the opacity on that and then see if I can just, just do something there. And then blend at it like I did last time. Wait. Just to hurry it up. And then smudge in one tab. Remember, you guys were kind of amazed by how I smudged away the detail. You're literally just smudging away the line. <laughs> That's it. Don't smudge away overlap, though. The thigh in front of the body. But you can smudge away pretty much every line. Leaving behind only the imprint. Um, and then, oops, oh yeah, it does look like the little snake lady I painted a while ago, the Gorgon, um, that should help for now, I'm going to try to match the values, and then we'll have something done. So, done as in like ready for critique, as in ready for like the overall changes. Um, that's fine for now. I'm going to color correct. Getting some of that blue. That's not a table creaking, that's my stupid makeup rub over there. All right, and then we can start revealing and deciding how dark everything is before we bring in the, the spells because that's the narrative. The narrative is in the spells. 
surrounding her. So it's not, the, the most important thing is not the silhouette. The silhouette in this case is supporting. So it is going to be pretty dark environment behind her. But uh, let's, let's try to take it one thing at a time. It was like a combination of like green and blue in this scene, which is pretty cool. It seems like the environment is blue, but the light behind her is green. So I'm going to try to stay true to both. And I did lose her little dress. And I'm going to get rid of this light here, which isn't really doing much. And then we have to address what's happening with the shoulders, which the reference is revealing right here. Um, you need to get rid of that strange uh, thing going on around her. Um, that shadow, that outline, which is just a sign that you just need to study some more. <clears throat> because it's just showing that you're not really sure how to um, paint the paint that part of the body. So there's this, all of this, this just super silhouette, really nice. Obviously the colors need to be corrected, but if we grayscale it, there, it, there's that version, which is used a lot. It's fun. It's great. Um, but we were trying to create something where we have really, really strong light available for those little sprites. So very, very simple change. We're going to grab again the darken. Oh, son of a bitch. All right. And lay that there. Um, go slightly darker with it. And lower that. And then delete away at the sprites. Slightly darker. Okay, and then I'm going to delete away at her face, moving upward. And I don't want that much brightness everywhere, just on the immediate areas behind her hair, through her hair. For the most part, instead of just having a pitch black scene with a bunch of sprites flying around, we're doing that combined light source set up like last time. And then the eyes I'll have to fix in a bit. And then we're going to boost these guys. Not that. And what you're supposed to do for secondary light sources that are this strong is you're supposed to just drown the whole area in them. And what I do is this usually and then I'll just delete away at what the light does not access. And I'll block it too. Like you can block in the secondary light just fine. I'm just looking at the navigator. So the navigator, I mean, sorry, not the navigator, the reference. So the reference tells me there's light beside her face that I don't see, but mostly on her neck from this one. And this would be the cutoff point for that one. So we're just going to blend it out. I'll probably use some soft brush too. And I'll keep basing it off how much light I'm allowing. To glow out of these little spots, I'm going to darken the background. Alright, so that's the first one. And then the second one is on the chest. And you can do it one at a time if need be. I think the chest would at least be um, done first because there's overlap and you want to erase at it without fearing like you're going to ruin it. So we're just laying it in. Just a big chunk of paint just thrown on top. So please make sure that you know you're you 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 are still thinking about things as a simple form study. Alright, so that's the second one. 
and then the front of the arm gets quite a bit that's deleted. So if you guys are over there with a pencil brush outlining little bits, you're not really exploring the volume of the light. You're not really getting the most out of it. At that point, why did you even bother with it? Because now it's just flattened your piece and you're only doing it with small little lines. It's not going to help you. Stops at the cheekbone, moves down, and then we blend that out. See, it just blends right away. Let your eyes adjust. There's a point where your eyes haven't yet accepted the change. Don't freak out and delete it and control Z in a split second. Just let, let the change set in. Let it sink in for a little bit and then see if you still like it. And if you follow the fundamental, you most likely will like it. there and then a little bit of extra glow and then I think there is a touch more this way but I'll do that with soft brush because it's actually pretty soft diluted light moving forward um, I'm gonna sneak in a little bit of like shadow from the first breast on the second breast just to give us some detail but look at what the universal light is saying. We can still sneak in some of that universal light, which I'm just going to choose as a white, and let it sit in between both breasts, just like that. And then move it up. So where do you guys fail? You give up on the light environment. You don't bother stacking your layers. You don't bother finding um, you know, some kind of universal pattern between the background and the object. You guys uh, paint in, penciling in volumetric secondary light, which is just really, really bad, um, bad thinking. Um, I'm not sure what to do with her uh, dress because I overlapped it, but I'm just going to leave her kind of nude. And I'm going to just try to look and try to find like a better silhouette for her neck because it's pretty chubby. I'm kind of not part of her body type. And um, I'm trying not to make her neck feel stubby, but I might have to do something where I lower the head just to make um, a little bit more of a threatening look in her eyes. So you see how we got rid of that line you had? And then you can do things like expanding the, 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 the curvature in the body. You could widen the hips. That's always like a way out of not dressing the character. And I like her kind of big head, kind of like Poison Ivy. You know, like that big hairdo, um, which might be nice. It just depends what you want to do. What, is she a diva? Is she an Aphrodite? <clears throat> type sorceress. She's not looking somewhere very fun, so I'm going to first liquefy her eyes a touch. She's just looking forward. You want her to look like she's looking ahead, not directly at you, but at you is a good choice. Not over your shoulder, not over your head or the top of your head. If, if you have to, you can make her look anywhere. As long as it's part of the general gesture of the of the illustration. So if you make her look forward a little bit, it feels, it really feels like it's a nice contrast between the low head but the upward looking eyes. It's like a, you know, opposite directions. But as long as it supports the general emotion, which is, you know, this super threatening look. But it's a character clothed in darkness, glowing with green. You could have, you know, done something like like that I've gone as to rock with it I like that very much I might keep that but let's just stick to your design initially and then, nah. um, 
So now that we have that figured out, I want to try to find the trees. <laughs> try to find the trees before I uh, painted them away, which might it might be more trouble than it's worth. But let's just move forward. Um, so I'm going to darken the whole thing once again. This is just a simple darken to black. That's all it is, but just look at what it does. I darken to black, just a simple slider, negative 31 on a, a few saturation slider. But I'm gonna delete back at all my little glowy pieces and anywhere that glows. So don't freak out. Yeah, you deleted your character a little bit, but it wasn't about your character. It was about the, char it was about the illustration, the character and the illustration combined. So don't freak out too much that you, you know we can't see her in full light anymore. If you guys were photographers, you just turn on all the lights, wouldn't you? Like if you take a picture. You guys would have the cheesiest lighting. You guys would not trust or just jump into the void for just a second. Just explore a slightly more dim scene. To have lighting that's a little bit more classy. So the universal is closer to her face than it is to any other part in her body. So that's why I'm deleting now at her face. Just so we could see it a little bit more. A little band of deletion just around the... Deletion is a word, right? Delete, deleting, but deletion? Somebody looked that up for me. Just to make the hair feel more volume because it is shiny, so it's catching some light too. Just like so. Might have deletion too much. Is it? Okay, good. <laughs> a lot of self-doubt lately. Um... And then I'm going to try to bring in some nice, like, forest dewy kind of... I think I'm done with my reference for now. Now I'm just going to delete it as if... I mean, I'm going to critique it as if I just got it in this draft. I'm going to just start boosting the dewiness in her skin. I'm just using a white. Oh. Let me bring that down. I'm just using a white right now to bring in that shine. This is on top of uh, what we saw after we darkened. And then a little bit on the collarbones. A much longer shadow, which is I think why her, her neck looks so chubby. It's because the shadow was much too shy. Just let it be dark. And there might be some residual light traveling under her chin to bring her chin out of the shadow a little. Test it, I'm zooming out, it's fine. Um, and then there's this area here. Which could be cleaned up. And then you have the option of um, kind of finding a middle ground between all of the background and silhouette and the foreground little lights. So you don't have to go this dark. And all of this hair could really use some as well. So. You're basically doing the same, this is over here, but you're just doing the same thing every time there's a curve in the hair tilted toward the light. So you're just gonna find where it is, draw it out, and then just turn it into I don't know why I think my pen pressure. Turn it into strands. So you're just painting hair with green. That's that's it simplified. I feel like um, it's so dark we wouldn't really be able to see her eyes that well anyway, so I'm going to try to bring in some really cool element here. And it's going to sit over most of the pupil in the iris. We're just inverting. And then the rest. So we darken things and are building out of them, which is there's, there's 
perfectly fine to do that. In fact, it's recommended when, it, when you're working with a dark scene, build out of the shadow. Don't start light for a dark scene and build dark because you're never going to go dark enough. Write that back to me. If you're working with a dark scene, go dark and then build out. And that's when it comes to actually painting the skin, which is what we're doing right now. You see how my highlighter is green? I'm painting her skin with green because that's the dominant light environment. Remember, this is all detail. When I zoom out, it's all going to be just pretty much useless. So just make sure you zoom out regularly. And I'm going to try to do something with the expression. I'm going to just dramatize it a little bit. I feel like you could really use some drama. And I'm going to go back and find where the pupils were before so that the eyes feel more open. And and one eyebrow is angry, but one eyebrow is curious. That's how you create dynamic expression. And even if, if it's a simple smile. Then if, if, you know, she is angry, you could kind of tilt one of her mouth sides up. And that'll also create a better expression than where we were before, when she was kind of high. Now there's a little bit more going on. I'm just using a white to outline and to show more of the pupil in the iris than we're used to seeing, which is how we make her look uh, angry, unnatural, like unsettled. And then don't be too generous with the highlighting, just selective highlight, which will make things look, feel a little bit more mature instead of just big glowing ass eyes. So from a distance, I'm going to find a middle ground for all those highlights. That's better. And then a really quick, simple wash of green over the eyes. And I think we've substituted that light on the center of her for the light in her eyes. Remember how you had a big old light right here? We could That was just an unnecessary uh, focal point distraction. You could have just um, moved that up so we actually have a portrait um, even in this dark environment. And the rest is up to you, however you want to dress up this scene. Um, so if she's, uh, I'm just smudging here. If she is, uh, you know, some kind of sorceress, just start designing what the dress would be, what the, and it, you can just, it can just be a fashion designer. You can be girly at this point and just see what you can do. It can be the simplest little prom dress. Who gives a shit what it is? Um, as, as long as it's, you know, working. She could have her boobs out. Who cares? She could stay nude. It doesn't matter, but if you feel like the scene is is too boring and you could just league it up have bands everywhere and banners uh, and that's kind of just a nice way to dress a scene up um, maybe she's lifted her legs so there's like a slight opening in her dress and it's kind of throwing her leg out don't lose the silhouette though if you do throw a bunch of clothing and I'm going to try to render it really quickly just so we talk about illustration, you know, because it's so taboo to talk about it. People are always scared to bring it up because it's, um, they, they're, they're, they love the idea, but whenever a student of mine wants to uh, jump into illustrations, I just, there's always a big sigh uh, in their side of the mic. 
And it's it's uh, it's understandable because I've had that side before where I'm painting and in the middle of my painting I have no idea what the hell to do with the rest of it. Mostly because I'm an uninspired person. But, um, you know, there's no, like, it's not that there's no originality out there. It's about, I, I just don't feel like taking a, doing a take on things anymore. I've seen it done a million times. So that's where my side would come from. But finish something, do something. It could be anything. Make something of your art. So... That's why I'm trying to push this illustration as much as possible because I haven't done enough of those, I think, in the critique hour from the past. So I'm just trying to um, make sense of these trees. I don't like them that much, like my versions. They're not great. And then just before I finish off, I'm going to start just darkening and I'm finally bringing in another color which you didn't have before things were just a bit too boring so darkening this half darkening the upper half there so we have that silhouette right a really nice silhouette but we also have the lights and that's again how you have dynamic lighting in a scene you just it's a battle between the two and while you adjust one you're adjusting the other but it's nice to have one instead of just having a super dark background and glowing green, which you could have done, but it's boring. You want a little bit more happening. Um, let me see if I can bring in a touch more. Yeah. I don't like that dress. It's so basic. Ugh. I'm already hating it. So I'm going to get rid of those stupid ass sleeves, the stupid Jana dress. And then, um, I, I guess that's fine. Uh, quick tip on adding clothing. Just get the whole thing blocked out. I'm just literally making shit up as I go. Right? And then just choose a local value block for that. Turn those little lines off. And wherever they were before, and you don't need a lot. You get the universal light color, which is now a yellowish white. And uh, just throw in some some light on the general area. That's that's pretty much it. And then after you do that, the fabric has a thickness to it, and so you just want to find where that thickness is that's blocking the light. Maybe this fabric out in front of that. A little, this whole area might be in shadow, so it might not even be a thing. And then wherever the light is rejecting, wherever the object is rejecting all light, find a shadow color and just plop a bunch of it in there. Just as long as you're working with big brushes, because fabric is basically hair. You're getting clumps of light in certain areas and clumps of shadow in certain areas. So she's got like this raggedy dress right now. Oopsie. <clears throat> and then I'm going to just darken it a little bit more and then maybe make it like some kind of half skirt thing because I don't want to lose the detail of the stomach and if you didn't want to make it a flowy dress but a, but a dress that clings on you're just expanding the folds already there, but you're just melting the dress together. So you already have most of the design already out in the legs. So you're just literally um, just doing that and just getting rid of, you're just adopting all of the shadows pre-existing on the dress. I mean, on the body. Oops. You're just expanding the dress to be more, uh, the silhouette to be dressed like, if it's a tight dress. Do you understand? And But you want to pretty much soften every edge if it's a skin tight dress. So if you have an edge there, an edge there. Oh, 
Well, that's looking, oh, that's nice. That's looking a little bit see-through and kind of like chiffon. So I'm gonna just do that. And I'm just gonna layer multiple lines and then just let one of those lines sit right on the skin. And it kind of feels like a see-through dress, but you have to smudge. So I know I'm kind of like going overboard and doing a full on illustration, but I like, I like that. Again, I just want to, I want to explore that a little bit more. I'm going to sharpen as if the dress turns into some kind of scales. I'm going to sharpen it um, around the breast area. Come on. And I might bring back some of those little, oh, that's all wrong. I might bring back some of those little um, wispy bits from earlier and I'm going to do a little quick color transition. So as if the dress is changing colors moving up to be more skin tight. And then just lower the cleavage. It's a full on demo today but it's okay. I don't I'm trying not to go to the gym late at night anymore because after my confession, I just like sleep my ass off. So I've had enough of the gym late at night. Um, the dress is going to carry a little bit of that universal light in it. Just a little, the silhouette, I mean. So I'm going to grab that silhouette color right behind her and just let it sit on the dress. But I'm going to keep smudging it just so it still feels like... Um, it still feels like uh, chiffon or some kind of, is that the right term? Is that the, the type I'm looking for? Um, so blur. I'm just blurring that out, smudging the edge. And I'm just letting my smudge brush like scatter and even sporadically smudge. It's the lower ha half of the canvas, so you should not be trying too hard to make it perfect and then there's how intense of a silhouette we're talking so we haven't made a decision on the final you know stamp in in this so if there is a, a hint of you know strong silhouette getting captured um, oh another cool thing is just to have like billowing black kind of fabric everywhere um, that's also super see-through. So let me see if I can pull that off. So pure black, drop that down, lower the opacity, and then something I want to do for some of them is lower the opacity, but like, so it feels like fabric. Just kind of overlap some of them. That might be a nice idea to explore. I don't know. I don't want to add rim light to every one of these, but let's see what I can pull off in a short period. Oops, what the heck did I do that for? Hmm. And then the light will capture the rest. So sometimes you paint something that's not visible and is only visible in the light, which is a little trick for painting anything see-through. And that's not even, you know, all of where I wanted to put those little see-through pieces. Like I would want to put some kind of general piece here or maybe have it tighter around here and um, just have more layers of that black. So that's something else we could do. 
which is more and more and more layers. Same technique, but way more layers of black around the skirt. So layer one, drop black, lower opacity. Layer two, drop the black. Oops. Lower the opacity. And then you just make sure you go through each layer and so that's a better example. And apply that um that rim light. And if you feel like it's all much too visible, just blur it through a Gaussian lens. But this whole section now carries a little bit more of that universal light in it. So grab that, drop that there, lower the opacity. You're just getting more and more layers each time. And then make sure you do have a rim light. So this is pretty much how I paint. I just explore layers and see what they can do. Everyone paints differently. But I like um, seeing what I could pull off as if I was part of an assembly line illustration team. Just seeing what I could pull off really quickly. And then do I want to keep any of those? Um, maybe just like that. I would keep that. just to make her look raggedy, but still very elegant. Okay. And then what do you guys recommend? What do you guys see that I could render pretty quickly here? Kind of covered the cleavage. So if you are part of like this pinup movement in your art, you might not want to do that. I always have done pinup. So I, I wouldn't cover that part up. And then we still haven't done that drowning silhouette light. We still haven't applied the glow and the bloom. So there's a lot more left to do, which I'll try to do really quickly. It's turning into a pretty long demo. Eesh, no, now it's at 100. Oh, this one's gonna fuck it up too? No, no. So, uh, where do I wanna put that? Like there? I, I really don't care where it goes. I just want to keep that texture moving. That kind of multiple layers of really thin fabric. What's something that I might have missed that I could be applying right now? Um, if they flatten it mostly, probably the background and character separate. Yes, bounce light on the shadow. Bounce light shadow. Um, so I would not do that. I would not do bounce light shadows uh, just because you're dealing with so many and it's a dark scene. So we're looking at the dark side of the portrait. I would not mess with that. I would not try to enforce the presence. We would not see them basically. Uh, they're not that present. So right now what I'm trying to do is just one collective motion behind her just to show the drop light. I, I am a sucker for silhouettes, as you know, so I do want to just push some in. And then before I bring in the bloom, and I'll take a look at what else you guys have suggested, I will do some pretty strong shadows on either side. And then... Uh, See if I can saturate her hair as if some kind of subsurface is happening. Cause I know her hair is red or orangish. So, oops. Oh no, that's not what I want to happen. Cause the the wash is so green that it's not gonna. Read. Um, let me see. How do I push into red? 
from green. They're absolute opposites. So you really, this is as green as you get. This is as orange as you get in a green wash. But if you had to, I'd say go for a cool red because that's the closest red orange has to being dark, which is the red in it. And I'm really going to be very, very careful with applying that red in. It'll let some green come through. I mean, some orange come through, but not so much. And I'm going to just let most of it be on the edge of the hair where there is enough bounce as universal to reveal some. So sometimes you don't have to have it everywhere, just on the edges. But that's it really for getting another color in there. Um, I kind of want to mess with the dress a little bit more. Um, maybe I went too bright in some of these areas. It could be just a little bit darker. We, are, we did lose the body though, so there's that. You, you had many options in this entire setup for a lot of changes. Um, I feel like that's nice too. Honestly, you, that this is part of the illustration process. You're here for an age. Um, other things you could do is some viney vines in the foreground. Maybe she's got like she's a thorn lady. Um, so let me do some foreground. Sorry guys, I haven't looked at your suggestions. I will in a second. Hmm. I know it's hugging the environment, but I mean the edges, but it's it's a closed vertical environment. It's a book cover basically. So I'm not sure about these ones, but I definitely want at least some of the foreground ones here. And what do we do with those? Plop, pure black. And then filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Blur those per their environment, and then you could raise the value a little bit, and then dim it along. That's a really bad find, but whatever. And dim it along the blue, blue color, kind of like a darker blue, and just darken according to that. You can make them slightly less thick vines. They can be a little less blue delicious. <clears throat> um, after we blur that, it's gonna be bad. All right, uh, maybe add some leaves circling around her. Okay, that's a good one. Oops. All right, so leaves. Um, what else? You could add some leaves or vegetation near the bottom. Oh, there we go. We already did that. Other than adding more detail, maybe like a necklace or additional little pieces. Um, I, I would say don't base your, your, your whole canvas on, you know, a couple of like jewelry pieces because they just don't do anything. It's like sprinkling on a piece of turd. It's not, it, it doesn't make it any less better if it's a piece of turd. You have to do some major reconstruction. So I never want my students to rely too much on, on generic kind of like, uh, literally it's just, it's just glam, uh, that makes a. A painting feel more finished when it's not when you zoom out you should see those those qualities um, I want to do something a little bit more crazy maybe like a twisted up background so grabbing the back if I had access to the background I would do a much more twisted up background um, let me see what else you guys want to do I flatten their images are so cool Maybe add some leaves. I, hope, I guess that's all the suggestions for today. Um, yeah, guys, got anything other than leaves? <laughs> I don't feel like adding leaves because she doesn't seem like she's a leaf lady. Uh, you could also lower the opacity of things in the foreground. Um, I might just drop them a little lower. Okay. Um, so let's do the let's do the eerie glow. Uh, so I'm just going to finish up for today. Um, if you had access to the background, uh, do this. If you don't, do it like me, uh, struggle. So what we're going to do is just try to make her have a glow around her and then you darken the background. I don't have access to the background, it's all merged, but basically it's just a green glow around everything. It's like a wash of green. 
which is going to be so freaking hard to do. So what I'm going to do is just find spots to throw it in. New layer, so nothing is going to happen. We already have a lot, but basically it's just like a blooming effect that we're going to allow to just sit over everything. Okay, and then the same thing with the background, which is still a bit dim, but I want her to feel a little translucent. Oh, and that's something we could do. We can make her entire lower half translucent and then make the trees behind kind of visible. So let's try that. Um, we're just trying it. So they're all see-through. And then just a little bit darker. So she looks more like a spirit. Haunting her ex-boyfriend. Alright. Some filter. Blur, collage and blur. So that's a pretty cool trick we could do to make her a little bit more ghostly. I did a really boring pattern for the for the um for that so you don't have to do that exactly. But alright. Um and then there's, apart from that bloom, I, I would not, if I'm not going to do the translucency, I'd keep some of the shadow there. And then there's the fact that the, the canvas is too long at this point, so we could easily uh, just shift everything up and then crop the canvas. I only made it that long, so kind of overcompensating where we were from where we were before. All right. Wish we lost the dress, but whatever. Um... Okie dokie. Uh, flatten the whole thing. If it cringes, if you cringe when I do that, um, you need to work on flattening your canvas. And uh, I would work on the silhouette behind her hands, just so her hands feel a little bit more uh, like that we can see them and we can enjoy their gesture. <clears throat> Aside from the hands, yeah. Yeah, I didn't do much with the hands just because I'd have to lasso around every single one, but it, it's just this glow behind this hand. So it wouldn't really be a lot of work. You're just lassoing on the outside and then grabbing this glow just so we could see part of the hand. That's that's it, really. That, that would make her hand visible. You don't need to go into the background and mess with your silhouette. Um, All right, so a lot of changes. I hope you guys benefited from this one. Do you guys have any questions at all? How did you transition from grayscale to color? I just threw one big layer of color on top and then went from there and applied more like blues, gl uh, green glows. Remember, all color comes from light, so if the light is green, we're just gonna borrow that color. But there's a universal color too, which is that blue night color. And then there's her color, which is a green ghostly color. So you now have three good colors to use when you transition into color mode. Um, I can't do any more. <laughs> I can't render any more right now. I'm burned out. Um, so thank you everyone for coming today. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to see the before and after. I mean, it's a big ass difference. But So before, she was glowing. The background had its own world. She, her glows made no sense. After. We darkened the whole scene. She's no longer completely visible. Um, and it's 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 not cheesy light anymore, right? It's not lame idea. <laughs> Don't be so down on yourself, guys. Uh, so what were we saying? What was some of the biggest changes about the light source? There was a silhouette and there was that little annoying light in the center right here. I'm trying not to click and lose all the history. Um, so before after we tilted her head down and it was mostly what we what we prepared for with our reference so embedding a reference into the illustration process is the current theme for my critique hours as much as i can based on what you guys rec uh, post on the on the reddit community so if you go to istabrak.com to get your work on my 
screen, go to estherback.com and click on the Reddit icon here, uh, join, uh, and uh, start posting your art and whatever it is. As long as it's not anime or anime fan art or anything like that. If it's fan art, make sure it's like a realistic attempt at the character. Um, uh, and then we have uh, the community challenge right here. If you learned something from today and you want to give back to the community, uh, you can do so on Patreon. Um, you can just join as a watcher, which is the dollar patron a month. That's $12 a year. Um, and um, uh, and a little, if you are looking for an equivalent educational art alternative from my private tutoring, which can be quite expensive, um, uh, you can join me as an apprentice and you can work with me to create illustrations. Right now I just sent the February illustration to all my apprentices on Discord. Uh, we are looking at ancient civilizations and we're bringing our own spin on ancient civilization mythological characters or religious figures so like um, from ancient egypt uh, the cultural um, uh, signifiers and design for aztec culture not a lot of people joined this january one but i get it it was january 2021 it was a very hectic month um, but hopefully moving forward you guys are a little bit more proactive with your uh, assignments and um i think that's it for announcements i will see you guys next year to next week tuesday next year tuesday is the due date for the uh, aztec um uh, ancient weapon design challenge um 16th at 5 p.m eastern time try to post way before the hour or else i might not look at it and that's it thank you all for coming i'll see you guys on thursday at 5 p.m eastern time if my health allows bye everyone